Hi, this is Dow Too Fast here. Several videos ago, I did a full review of the Onus C500 Android 7 inch double DIN car stereo that you see right here. Now, if you missed that video, I will link it at the end of this video. Now, in today's video, I will be installing this unit into my 2008 Honda Odyssey. And in front of me are all the parts that you'll need for this installation. So, next to the car stereo, we have this antenna adapter for the Honda. This is made by Metra. The part number is 40-HD10. Next to it, this is the wiring harness. And this one is also made by Metra. Part number 70-1722. So with this connector, what you do is you connect these wires to the wiring harness that's on the car stereo. And then you'll be able to plug this directly into the factory harness. By using this wiring harness, you don't need to cut the factory harness to connect to the aftermarket radio. Over here we have some butt connectors we'll be using to connect these wires together. Over here on the right, this is the double DIN radio bezel that will allow you to fit this double DIN aftermarket radio in the middle spot right here. And then this piece will get installed right into the factory location. Now this piece is made by the company Skosh and it's part number HA1700B and it'll work for all the Honda Odysseys from 2005 to 2010. Here's a look at the factory radio. It's a rather basic unit. It does have a six disc changer but no Bluetooth, no navigation. Now one thing to note about the Honda factory radio is it uses an anti-theft security code. So if you were to disconnect the connectors at the back and remove the radio, next time when you reinstall it, it will prompt you for that code to unlock it before you can use it. Now typically that security code is found on a card that came with a vehicle when you first bought it. So that's just something that you might want to check before removing this radio. To remove this radio, we'll first need to remove this panel right here and it's held in by clips on either sides. Using a plastic pry bar, I'm going to start with the left side and then work your way around to the bottom here. Now carefully lift this piece up and you'll need to disconnect the wiring harness that connects to the door switch, the hazard switch, and the climate control. With the passenger SRS connector disconnected, do not turn on your ignition or else you're going to set off the SRS trouble lights. Next, remove the two Phillips screws that you see right here. Now there's one more Phillips screw that's holding this unit in. If you look at the middle, way inside here, there's one more screw. Let me give you a closer look. Now we'll need to move the shifter down because right now it's blocking the unit from coming out. What you want to do is remove this small cover right here. And then using a flathead screwdriver, push it down and then you shift the gear. With the unit pulled out, put the gear selector back into park. Here's a look at the back of the unit. We have these connectors we need to disconnect. On these two connectors, you need to match up the wires and connect them together. So on the Metra connector, which connects to your factory harness, on the back of the packaging, it gives you the wiring color and what each wire is. So for example, red is 12 volt ignition, yellow is 12 volt battery constant, black is ground, and the other ones are for speaker connections. Over here on the aftermarket radio, we'll have similar wiring here. We have the power, the ground, and the speaker output. So you just want to match up the wiring on both sides and connect them together. So for these connections, I'll be using these butt connectors and this crimper. And let me do one, I'll show you how this works. 
basically put the wire into one end and then crimp it down take the other wiring harness put it into the other end crimp this down so this one's done we'll continue on with the rest of the wires so here I've connected all the wires now I want to point out on the antenna there's a blue wire you need to connect that to 12 volt ignition okay secondly there is the brown wire which is a break in wire from the stereo unit and you need to ground that so that's why it's tied to the ground here now what we need to do is put on a couple of tie wraps and tidy this up now there are a couple of wires that I taped up that I don't need such as the can transmit the can receive the remote on for a powering external amplifier the power antenna wire and the backup wire for the backup camera now these three wires the white and green and the black these are the key wires and these ones will be used to integrate with the steering wheel control now when I test fit the bezel onto the radio the hole on the bezel is actually smaller than the radio itself so what I'll need to do is cut some of this plastic off around the edge to make it fit okay it's time to break up the Dremel and do some cutting I used a Dremel saw to cut through about three-quarter way on the thickness of this plastic and then I finished it off with an X-Acto knife and as you can see it's a clean cut so the last thing I need to do is get a file and just smooth out the sides where I did the cut I use a file to shave off the sides until the opening is the right size and as you can see right now this fits perfectly and to quickly show you what I cut off on the back side here is I cut off this plastic ridge that's on this side on this side and the bottom I left the top edge the way it is so here I'm going to install the side mounting bracket Now the unit didn't come with any screws to mount on the side so I was able to find a couple of screws that actually fit and that's what I'll use to secure this. So right now I'm trying to figure out which pins on one of these connectors is for the steering wheel control and I think I found it. So if you look at this gray connector, not the big one, okay, there are two of them. This smaller one with 20 pins on it, I'm probing two of these wires, pins 6 and 7 and then when I press any of the buttons for the audio control on the steering wheel you'll see the resistance change so right now this one is volume up is 355 ohm volume down 100 ohm mode 3.74 kilo ohm channel up 1.69 kilo ohm and channel down 0.772 kilo ohm so those look like the wires that I need to connect to my Android unit to have steering wheel control. Let me give you a closer look of this connector with the two wires. So this one here, as you can see, has 10 pins on top and 10 pins at the bottom. And right now I'm probing pins 6 and 7. And the wire color on this one is brown on pin 6 and look like a light brown or tan color. On the pin 7. So I've connected the key ground to pin 6 which is the brown wire and then the key 2 wire which is green to that beige pin 7 wire on the harness. So here I'm soldering the two wires. Tape up the connection so you don't have any short. Another thing I did earlier is ran a USB extension cable 
from the center here all the way to the glove box on the passenger side. So that will allow me to plug a memory stick so I can play some music or movies. Now we can connect the Metro wiring harness to the factory wiring harness. Next we can connect up the antenna wire. Next we'll install this GPS antenna and for this vehicle it's going to be very simple. What you want to do is remove the backing on this double sided tape and then we're going to stick this onto a plastic panel way back near the edge of the windshield. There is no metal surface above the antenna so you don't have to worry about the reception. It'll work perfectly fine. So here's a close-up look of where the antenna is placed. So now you can take the radio and connect all the connectors, including the GPS antenna. So here's a look at the back. I have the USB cable connected, FMAM antenna connected, and the GPS antenna connected, and the main wiring harness connected. I'm not going to be using the SIM card for the 4G cellular service, so that's why I'm not installing the 4G antenna. And I'm not using any external video or amplifier. So I don't need the other harness with the RCA cables. Now reinstall the three screws. Now we'll reinstall the climate control panel. Reconnect the connectors at the back. Don't forget this little cap next to the shifter. Okay, let's test it out. So let me show you how to set up the steering wheel control. What you want to do is open up your settings, scroll down to steer wheel button, select that, and here you can program the steering wheel buttons to one of these functions. So what you want to do is first press one of these buttons. This is the volume down and it'll start flashing. Now on the steering wheel I'm going to press the volume down button. Once you press a button the icon will stop flashing and turn blue. So let's do volume up. Now channel down. Channel up. For the mode, I'm going to program mute button. You can always change this later on. So now we can exit this. Now if I press the volume up. Let's get you what you need. Mute. Channel up. Oh, congratulations. Well, I hope you enjoy watching the installation of this Onus C500 Android head unit. I don't want to make the video too long, so in this video, I mainly want to focus on how to install the unit and set up the steering wheel control. Now, some of you might have some questions on the operation of this unit. I did cover a lot of it in my review video. Now, if you did not see it, I will link it at the end of this video so you can watch that. But if you have additional questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section. What I'll do is do a follow-up video to answer your questions and also talk about some of the pros and cons of having an Android head unit in your vehicle. Now if you want to know where you can get the wiring harness or the installation kit or the tools used in this video, I'll provide the link for these items in the description below. Well I hope you enjoy watching this video and don't forget to click on a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.